As you know, we've been responding full time to the matters of cl clerical sexual abuse, especially since the lifting of the statute of limitations here in Minnesota a year and a half ago. We have all been devastated by the stories from those who have been hurt by clergy sexual abuse. Victims, survivors, and their loved ones have personally shared with me the heartbreaking stories they have to tell. I have sensed their anger, their sorrow, and their intense sense of betrayal because of these unthinkable evil deeds. I deeply regret their suffering, and I will do everything in my power to respond and make sure that they move towards healing. We must come together as a church to care for those who have been hurt during this tragic time of our church's history. As announced in October, we have been continuing to work with those representing victims and survivors to make sure that we are doing all that we can, all that we can to prevent the sexual abuse of minors, as well as to be instruments of healing for those who have already been abused. In considering how to address the, final resti the financial restitution of victims and survivors, I have consulted experts in the fields of finance, bankruptcy, insurance, civil and canon law, law enforcement, child sexual abuse, and victim advocacy in order to consider all available options. And they have advised me that Chapter 11 reorganization is the best structure available for resolution of victims' claims. So I have directed that a petition for Chapter 11 reorganization of the Archdiocesan Corporation be filed today in the United States Bankruptcy Court here in Minnesota. Please note that this filing does not involve our parishes or our Catholic schools. I make this decision because I believe it is the fairest and most helpful recourse for victims and survivors whose claims have been made against us. Reorganization will allow the finite resources of the archdiocese to be distributed equitably and fairly among victims and survivors. It will also permit the archdiocese to provide essential services required to continue on its mission within the 12 county districts that make up the archdiocese. This action will not in any way avoid our responsibilities to those who have been affected by clergy sexual abuse. This is not an attempt to silence victims, nor it is an attempt to deny them their justice in court. On the contrary, we want to respond positively in compensating them for their suffering. I have made this decision thoughtfully, prayerfully, and collaboratively. I have already mentioned the experts which, with whom I have been working, and I have also received approval of the various archdiocesan boards, namely the Archdiocesan Corporate Board, the Archdiocesan Finance Council, and the College of, of Consultors. They all agree with me that reorganization is the best form in which a ne ne negotiated global resolution can be established that fairly and equitably compensates claim claimants and permits the archdiocese to continue its important message and mission of evangelization. I want now to take a moment to introduce to you the leadership team that has been working so tirelessly with me for, for all these this past year and a half. First of all, my two auxiliary bishops, Bishop Lee Pichet, where are you? Here he is, okay. The Vicar General for Clergy and Parishes, Bishop Andrew Cousins, Vicar General for Hispanic Ministry, Schools and Evangelization, Father Charles Lakowitzer, who is the Vicar General and moderator of the Curia, my Chief of Staff, Mr. Joseph Coopers, Chancellor, Kippers, I'm sorry, Chancellor for Civil Affairs, our in-house legal issues. Mr. Thomas Mertens, our Chief Financial Officer, who heads up our administration and finance. Ms. Susan Mulherin, Chancellor of Canonical Affairs, who takes care of our canonical questions. Judge Timothy O'Malley, Director of Minister Standards and Safe Environment, and he works with our Clergy Review Board 
and our minister, Ministerial Standards Board. Ms. Ann Steffens, who is the Director of Communications, overseeing our Catholic spirit and communications with the media. Rita Beatty, Communications Manager, who handles press releases and other forms of communications. And Mr. Charles Rogers, attorney, shareholder with Briggs & Morgan, who is representing our legal interests. And finally, Deacon Rip Reardon, who facilitates our team meetings, which take place three times every week. These fine men and women of my team join me in making a pledge to you, the faithful of the Archdiocese. Number one, we want to assure you that the protection of minors is our top priority, and it informs our every action and our every decision. Secondly, we are making every effort to resolve those issues through collaboration, cooperation, and reconciliation. Thirdly, we will continue to care for those who have been harmed by clergy sexual abuse. We continue to facilitate the healing process for this local church in order to restore trust among our Catholic faithful who are counting on the clergy and our leadership in the church to make virtuous decisions for the well-being of the body of Christ. Obviously, we have a long journey ahead of us to restore trust through humility, competency, and transparency in order to respond with compassion to all those who have been hurt, to continue to atone for the sins that have been committed, and ultimately to foster healing. The filing for reorganization marks another important step on our way forward as a local church. I am sure you have a lot of questions, but because we just filed this morning, I'm not sure I have a lot of answers for you because there are a number of, case, of these questions that will have to be decided by the courts. We have provided you a packet which has a number of question and answer format and also a fact sheet, and I hope those will be of help to you. Like yourselves, I have a lot of work and we have a lot of work to do yet today because there is what they call a rolling filing. You file uh, with the court one sheet of paper and then there's a number of documents about as thick as a telephone book that have to be filed within the next several hours. But I wanted to give you a chance to ask the, the most important questions that might be on your mind. So are there any questions? I believe it was. It was a very important step to take, and uh, I was very grateful for it. Unfortunately, I happened to be in Africa at the time. We have a sister uh, diocese there, and that had been planned for over a year and a half. Um, when, before I left, I had said I would stay home if I thought that was going to take place while I was away, and I was assured that it wouldn't. Then all of a sudden, it, it happened. So these things sometimes move very quickly. So I regretted not being there, but I'm. I would agree with you, it was a turning point in our relationship with the uh, legal counsel. Why was the relationship poor, and what is it now? Well, I think um, it was a bit, if I might say, uh, acrimonious, and uh, there wasn't much dialogue. At this point, we have been working with Mr. Anderson's office. Uh, he knows what we're doing, and uh, we talk about many different uh, aspects. So it's, it's, um, uh, certainly we're not on the same team. I mean, he has his interests and, and we have ours, but we both have and have established this, that our main concern is for the healing of the victims and survivors. Archbishop. Please. This survivors Network issued a press release. I understand. They believe that this is really an effort uh, for the Archdiocese and for you personally to avoid testimony at trial. And I know you've said that this is really about an equitable distribution of monies for but for many in the Archdiocese, you remain a polarizing figure on this issue. Have you considered resigning? And if not, why not? Well, um, there are a couple of questions that you have in that one question, um, but I'll answer the last one first. I do not intend to resign. I accepted this uh, position on, at the bequest of the Holy Father. And um, you know, there's an interesting thing. You, when you become a bishop of a diocese, 
your coat of arms, which represents you, is fused with the coat of arms of the diocese. So it's much like a marriage, if you will. And we all know that marriages go through rough difficulties, <coughs> rough times. And this is one of those times. And it's seven years, and that's usually when it happens in marriages. Uh, so that just happens to be. But, uh, you know, I love this archdiocese. Uh, I think I have worked hard uh, on behalf of the archdiocese. And um, I believe that with this team, which is relatively new uh, for the past uh, year and a half, I think that we have in place now, and with the protocols we set up last October, I think we have the wherewithal to continue into the, fu into the future and to uh, go through this process and be successful. Well, I think I responded to those documents. Uh, I don't know exactly what you're referring to, but I have been kept in form and I acted, I thought, appropriately in responding to those situations. I'm talking about when you said um, that you, when you became Archbishop that no one warned you, everyone told you that this was something. Oh, I don't think I ever said that. I don't think I ever said that because in the first weeks I was here, uh, I did meet with the staff about this particular situation. I, well, I, have you looked that up? I, I don't remember making that statement. Yes, please. Archbishop, if I may. Part of giving the victims the opportunity to go to court in a trial is to give them a chance to face their abuser. What say you to the victims who are watching this and perhaps feel like they are now denied that opportunity? Well, I think there are different uh, forum in which uh, victims can tell their stories, and I think we have to find ways of doing that. I think um, Mr. Anderson himself has said that it's probably better for the victims that they don't have to do that in a court of law, that they could do it in the bankruptcy court, and it's an easier and a more gentle uh, context. Well, to my knowledge, um, I'm not aware that it will impact our, ch our uh, parishes and our schools. Uh, we are the 12th diocese in this country to go through reorganization. And from the research that we've done, they, the parishes and schools in those uh, dioceses had not been affected. We don't know. I mean, in a sense, I can't make any promises here because we don't know what the judge is going to do as we go through the reorganization. But if it is true to form from what other situations have been, I don't see where that's go they're going to be involved. What message would you give to Christians or, or Christian leadership about how their money and their donation contributions to the archdiocese are going to be affected in whatever payout comes up from the next couple of years? Well, basically, um, the assessments that we have on um, our parishes and the plate collection is about eight percent, eight eight cents on the dollar, and so um, uh, I anticipate that those will continue. I hope that our people, who I know are generous, will continue to contribute to their parishes and uh, to the archdiocese. Uh, we had just had another successful uh, CSA, our Catholic Services Appeal, uh, which went over its uh, goal this year. I was a little concerned about that. Um, but I hope that uh, they will see that we are doing the right thing here, and uh, I don't anticipate that, um, that it will be affected. At least I hope not. Please. What are the findings in the investigation into your conduct, and why you, won't you release it? Well, that's not mine to, uh, to speak to. Uh, Bishop Boucher is in charge of that, and I'd ask him to speak to that. Uh, <clears throat> the investigation is ongoing. And uh, because of that, I, I can't say anything about it. It would be a disservice to those involved for me to make any comments while it's still ongoing. Will it be raised? Uh, I can't even comment about that yet.
Um, I think that's a question that's a kind of an open question, but um, does somebody want to take that? Uh, can you take Charlie? We're certainly hopeful that uh, a mutually agreeable uh, settlement can be reached with insurance carriers, but time will tell. Uh, certainly we have uh, claims against the carriers, and carriers have various defenses, uh, but uh, we will work. Uh, hand in hand uh, with victims to seek the maximum rewards possible. But to speak to it now uh, is a bit premature. Archbishop, can you speak uh, to This lady that? has been raising her hand and <laughs> I haven't so. I think um, as I recall, um, you have to be very prepared when you go into this kind of process. Uh, you have to have your ducks all in a row, and um, uh, you have to be prepared for a, uh, uh, at least a year or two uh, of very difficult managing of your assets. Please. Again, that's something that's going to be um, uh, dealt with in the process itself. But we may, in fact, have to sell some of our assets, yes. We can take one more question. Go ahead, Meryl. Um, what kind of plans have you had with the, with the Vatican on this question? Well, in order to enter into this kind of uh, reorganization, you need the permission of the Holy See. And uh, so I have obtained that. Uh, the letter came a week ago. It's something I understood that was, was required. That, that, that the Holy See was requiring it? Yes. That you filed for bankruptcy? Yes. Well, I mean, we, 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 we informed them that we were doing it, and we asked them permission, and we explained okay. the reasons that we were uh, proposing this. So it originated from? From, Some, uh, from us, yes. It, it came from us, okay. from me. Again, thank you very much for your presence. Thank you for your questions. And please, please keep me in your prayers, as well as this archdiocese. Appreciate it. Thank you.